Hello, my name is Samson Souza. I just um, wanted to tell you what brought us out here and um, the stuff that we see and all that happening and the, the things that's unfolding right now before our eyes is, is unreal. And to me, I feel like the Kupunas, they're speaking to us and telling us, telling us what we gotta do over here. But the reason why we came out here was actually because of the, the dolphins. We had a night off. See, because people, people come out here, they, they, they chase the dolphins all over, all day, every day, and we kind of, they're resting right now, you know? Right now, the, the dolphins are resting. They're, they hunt nighttime, they rest daytime, they're nocturnal. And people don't know the moon phases that they come in, so. We watch them come here and intercept, try to intercept the night uh, when they come here passing by. But I was here two years straight because I got, I got laid off from my job and I was addicted to pain medicine. And that brought me out here. And this place out here is, an, is healing. This place itself is healing. And my dad always told me to be aware of your surroundings and be vigilant of everything and everybody and appreciate every, every single thing around you. Appreciate the water, the land, the sand, the fish, everything, the mountain, whatever you see around, just appreciate them. And while you're appreciating them, they're gonna speak back to you. And that's what happened. This place, this place talked to us and told us about all these people are just using this place as one money market, you know. The tour boats, they come out here, they chase the dolphins. They, they don't care about the laws. And the people bring out their Airbnb people out here, their clients, and they make money too out here off of that. And they come out from the shore and they start to chase, chase the Nile all around. But we just seen this place as them using them as money. But, we came out here, we, we see all the things that are going on, like the people are stopping us, us Kanaka from coming out here and letting the tourists do what they like. And that's not right. And that's how you can tell that the corruption in Kanaka view is, is real because this, this is actually on fake state. This is the fake state. This is the fake state of America. <laughs> the United States, but what we see now is the money talking, blood no matter. Our blood no matter, they don't care about us anymore. But this place right here, we've been taking care of this place for, for like six months now, because they tried to do that tactic to us, that bully tactic and kick us out. But we started taking care of this place and this place started telling us what to do and what to say. And in here, there's EVs buried in here. And these guys just went back in there and dig up the road. They found EVs right here. They buried it over here, someplace under this tree over here. But people coming through. Sorry about that. Yeah, we come out there. We come out there for fishing. We come out there for to gather with our families. We come out there to gather from the mountain. And we come out there for healing because my dad died too, two months, two months ago. My dad died and all this time because my dad was still here, I couldn't come out here and do what he wanted me to do because this stuff right here, my dad, my dad was all about this stuff. It's just that he, he wasn't well enough to, well enough to do it. So we couldn't do it and we just see how much, how much people take advantage of this place. And even like now, I think they're, they're gonna make a movie over here. And this place right there is Crown Lands. <laughs> this place right there is Crown Lands. And 
just all of a sudden they come one time and they get permits to open the gate. We wanted access in here for a long time, but we couldn't have access. But now the fake state is issuing permits that is not even legal to, to make these movies. And like we can see, we can see that it's about the money. It's about the money and money talks and blood quantum no matter nothing. We don't matter. We don't matter anymore. This, the corruption is so bad that I even worry for myself, you know, worry for myself, my family. <laughs> but um, I don't know what to say. I, my, we, all, we all come out there for healing, and every morning we see we see this place get desecrated, desecrated with foreigners that come here with their people and think because they pay taxes here, they they're entitled to this place. But this place really have fed all families for generations, for generations. And I taught plenty of all families, all, all kids, and plenty of my cousins too. They learned how to fish right there, right in this water. And to see them do this, it just hurts because they can do whatever they like. like they, can, they can run us over, they can do whatever they want to us. I mean, nothing wrong, nothing wrong with that. Like, they're gonna ice us out of our own home. They're gonna ice us out of our own home. That's what they're doing right now. Because uh, everything is going so high and the money for infrastructure is so big that they cannot, they cannot contain it. They, they like these people coming, so they get all the money until we're not gonna have nothing left. Nothing left for our kids and, and our families to come. Because everything gonna be poison. But, Inside there, inside there get EVs and unexploded ordnance. They needed to have one, one cultural archaeologist and and probably a bomb squad or something. You know, they're not supposed to just just remove dirt. They don't even have a grubbing permit. These guys don't even want grubbing permit. We look at the permit. The permit only says that they're supposed to only have what six to three to six people and no equipment. Like, oh, they, they had the tree trimmer and the dumpster, yeah. But they had excavators, they had, they had skid steers, they had trailers, they had all kinds of stuff. And to us, we feel like that's not right. They should at least come talk story with us and let us know what, what's going on, you know? Keep us in the box. Like, they just come here and act like bullies. But that's what, we, that's what we're fighting against, fighting against the fake state. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> well, this place right there was uh, Nakaniko or Makua, they, they, they built this place, but after their, their, um, yeah. They found the Eevee right there, I think. Yeah. I think it's right in here, the, the Eevee. I think they stay right in here. That's why they buried it back up. But, yeah, this place over there was all bushes. All in there was all bushes. Wasn't, um, wasn't accessible. You couldn't drive through there. But that's what they needed to do, I guess, to, to open up for the movies. All, all in this corner right there. All in this corner right here had, um, had grass. At all grass, they didn't have a grubbing permit to do to do this job, and that that right there already is in violation because you're violating your permit when you do that kind of stuff. But that's what we that's what we're fighting against, you know, and and we we've been fighting against this.
for generations, you know. Our, our families, our people got, got, got our identity stolen. You know, our people got our identity stolen. Couldn't even name our kids Hawaiian names. Couldn't even speak our own language. Sometimes. It's hard, hard, sometimes hard to talk about it. Because it still hurts, still to today. It hurts. And then to see our, to see some of your friends and your, some of your friends and family that, that are working and hey, they're making good money, but they're looking, they look down on us because we, we're um, doing this out here. But we're not doing this out here because not nothing. We was called out here. This place, this place called us out here. Every night we feel connected, connected to this place. And this is why, because of all the, all the wrongdoing that's going on over here. Right there. All this right now. They digged up all this. And it was by force because they forced us to move away from that gate. And they, they ripped the gate out of my hand and I tried to stop them and I told them who, who was responsible for this gate, but I guess it's because of their tax map. Their tax map is what, what goes, you know? That's why it's kind of kind of hard, kind of hard because we're fighting against big demons, big spirits too, you know? And this is like the, the worstest enemy. The money is the root of all evil. <laughs> and we don't need money over here. All we need is love. We need, everybody needs to get connected. Like my brother Tony Gomes told me, everybody got to connect their avatar tail back to the Aina. Because once you connect your avatar tail back to the Aina, the Aina will take care of you. And that's what it is. We, we're out here connecting, cleaning up. And you cannot say that we give him back because that's selfish of us to say we give him back to the land. We owe him this. We, we, need to, we need to take care of this place. This place took care of us. This is like, this is like taking care of our mom or dad. We, we, gotta, we, gotta appreciate, we gotta appreciate them, you know? This is, they taught us, they brought us. They made us, you know? They made us who we are today, this place too. But look at all this, all digged up. They're not supposed to do all of these. They're not even, they, they didn't even have a permit for this. But I guess that's what they, I guess that's what they can do eh, when they're, when they get money, you know, when they get money, they can pay their way through. That's why like even how, how can a person buy an island, like on whole island, you know? How can, how can you buy an old, a whole island? That's stolen land right there you just bought. And that's crazy, you know. We ain't gonna have nothing left. They're icing us out of our own home. All of our families moving to Utah, Arizona, Vegas. They're moving because they cannot afford to live here. And I've been working. I've been working for America. I've been working for, I was working 17 years in a local tree union, operating engineer, and we was desecrating, desecrating the land. Every Thursday we used to blow up the mountain. Palihua, and that's, that's this great in the Aina. You know, that's, that's to the, you're blowing up the, blowing up the land to accommodate more people, to accommodate more people now. And that's not right. And I've been doing that for 14 years. I've been working there and watching them every day and every time, every day when I used to think about it, wow, my heart used to get sore because I know that mountain is sacred and these guys just taking advantage. That's why a lot of people's, Families and people got sick working there, and that's why I, that's why I got out. That's why I got out because I cannot do that. I cannot. That's like that's like me poisoning my family. I cannot do that. But yeah, this place over here is very special to us, and we don't like them just use this place exploiting them. You know, everybody gonna see this beach again though.
and then they're going to think, oh, this was the place where the movie was made, you know? We're going to come here and whatever. But the thing about it is everybody got to have respect for the, this place. Everybody got to have respect for the Naya. The Naya, that's all cousins. <laughs> that's all family. And these guys just coming out there chasing them and making money off of them. And we just see them struggling every day. But if you come here in the morning, you can see you can see the dolphins, the night I come inside and they appreciate us. They just circle right around us. If no one's around, they just circle right, right in the shore, right in front of us so we can see them, you know, because they appreciate it. Even the other day when, when all this stuff with this geek happened, we, at the end of the day, there was, there was a unreal fish that was just splashing all over this, this ocean side, you know, we didn't see that a long time. But that's how you know that our kupunas, they appreciate us because the kind of stuff you never see for years, you see them, you see them now. And that's how you know that we're doing the right thing. Everything that we're doing out here, we feel, I feel right about it. Nothing out here I'm doing is wrong because I know that this place need one voice. This place need one voice. All the voices that was coming in here was I don't know if they had their own agenda, but that's not my, my kuleana, you know. Just worry about my own, but. This place out here, I'll, I'll tell you, this place right now, went from 92 to maybe 97-ish. Me and my dad used to do Hiuvai out there. My dad, my dad used to work for Homo Keola. That was a drug treatment program and he got the grant of Buenai Valley, the 100 acres and the 100 ulu trees. But as soon as they got the grant, my dad couldn't work, so he was kind of down. But his, his vision for this place was to help rehabilitate our men and women from our community, help them to have a place, help them to, to rehabilitate while being self-sustaining, you know? And that was my dad's vision. And that's why he, he wrote the proposal for that, that, um, that grant. But he used to always, that, that was his vision. And I like, I like, I like put something up through his legacy, you know, doing this with our people because everybody out here is healing. And you know, some, some of our brothers and sisters just need a little bit of encouragement encouragement because they lost themselves, you know. They lost themselves out there and that's what we do out there. Out there we talk story, we love on each other, we kuka kuka, you know, we talk story, bring everybody's ideas together. And then we we try to work through that, you know. But this place has been nothing but a blessing to us. This place has been nothing but a blessing. This place out there, I tell you, you don't know the feeling. Nighttime you come out there and you watch the Watch the stars. Man, this place just speaks to you. Unreal. But yeah, we just we just never like we just never like see them do it do all this stuff because none of these guys have have um as you can tell love for this place, you know, they just repray true. Because if they really did love this place, they wouldn't they wouldn't do this. But you can tell that they love money. They don't, they don't, they, for the love of money, they would do this, you know. <sighs> but that's all we was worried about. We was worried about them. We was worried about them coming out here and just digging up stuff and exposing the ground without even having someone, someone here to, to check, you know, to check if they, they, they moved up any grounds because that's what they need. If they're going to pick up, look, you can tell that this is more than two inches. <laughs> yeah. More than two inches from here to here. More than two inches, they didn't dig them. And they're not supposed to do that. They didn't have no grubbing permit, nothing. All they had was a permit for three to four workers. Yeah, and look at this. They opened up this. I don't know what they opened up this for. And, and this right here too is from, from Auntie, Auntie Leandra. She used to come over here, she had a nice, 
nice guardian rock area. And she used to take care of this place. And if we see them open them up like this, even her when she used to take care of this place, she didn't want this place open up. Maybe this was done by the caretaker safety. Uh, I don't think so. Oh, right there. This is what it's done. So it's for the line, the power line. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But yeah. It hurts. It hurts to see to see them do whatever they can, do whatever they like, you know. And with no regards to the people of this place, you know. And it's just hard, hard knowing that what we're fighting against is is a big beast, <laughs> and they can take you out too if they wanted to, you know, silently, because they tried, <laughs> they tried to, but. That's why I, that's why I post everything on the camera so they can see everything. They can see everything that's going on. All all what they're doing to us, you know. But you can you can see too. I don't know if I don't like bring that up. That's that's too deep. <laughs> With the Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement, DHHL. I was telling the people that the tourists, the tourists, the, the tourism industry, they're all in together. And I told them this before. And just one month ago, they said that Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement took over the Hawaii Tourism Authority. So we all was tripping out because I didn't know, I didn't, I didn't know that they was going to do that, but that's the kupuna speaking to us and telling us what what's gonna happen because we're out here, you know. And that's all it is, is all the money. They're all trying to keep the money in there. But the first year of that thing, I, I'm not gonna lie, we got we got we got assistance from that, but the next year they started helping anybody and everybody. So already right there we lose we lose, you know. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. We love this place, and we're not going nowhere. We're going to stay here, we're going to take care of this place, because this place took care of us. And please, please, if you, if you see people, tell them do not chase the, the dolphins, because they're resting daytime and they need the rest and yeah that's grass we like to have this place we like to have this place so that our families can come and enjoy the beach you know we don't even have parking anymore over here this place has become another Waikiki, you know, but ever since we've been out here, we've been talking to the people, educating the people, and if they're coming out there for dolphins, they're in violations, so we just call the HPD, HPD come out there and tell them to leave, but it's just hard to see how they come, just for one guy, how they come heavily armed with all their guns and you know, that, that day they had, I think, seven, seven HPD officers and one DLNR officer. But that's how you can tell that the money, the money talks and the blood, all blood quantum, no matter how blood, even though we're from this place, it doesn't matter to them. But I don't know, I don't know what else, I don't know what else. Yeah, this place right there have been main maintained by Tony Gomes. But it's not his place, this is Nakaneko or Makua. But he just kind of see the plants dying. So you got to take care of them. But if you come out there, we, I can show you some fish tails and some pig jaws. <laughs> oh, watch out. Yeah, I can show you some some fish tails that we, we gather over here, but from my friend, Brother Bobby. 
saw Shibis and Akus, Mai Mai's, Ulua, and the Peak Jaws, that's all from here. So we're um, gatherers, <laughs> cultural <laughs> practitioners. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> 